In this video, I'm going to take you step by step through the process of importing a percussion loop or a drum loop and using Recycle to chop it up and turn it into a Rex file so that you can use that in Reason in the Dr. Rex loop player uh, and be able to manipulate that loop creatively. We'll start by going to the file menu and opening up a file. The program is asking you if you want the left locator to move to the first slice point. We'll just say yes for now. We'll start by listening to the file and deciding which of these loops we want to recycle. That sounds good. In most programs, you use the spacebar to play and stop, and it is the same thing here in Recycle. Step one will be to zoom in on the file that we want to recycle. So I'll be using Apple click and drag to zoom in on the area. Step two will be to use a sensitivity slider to begin to add slices between the beats. The program has already analyzed the transients in this file, the points where the file gets quiet and gets extremely loud, and it considers that the beginning of a pulse or a beat. As I begin to move the sensitivity slider to the right, you can see that it already begins to chop up the file. Now you do have to visually look at the file and try and find the sweet spot with the sensitivity slider. It is possible to go too far and the slider will cause the program to add slices and chop up a single beat into small pulses. We don't want that to happen. So as I leave the sensitivity slider here, I can visually scroll across and see that there's actually two pulses here. And our goal is for every slice to only be one pulse. There's multiple pulses there, so I'll move this forward a little bit. I can see that it begins to grab those. And so far, so good. The next step is we want to go in and audition each of these slices and make sure that it's only one pulse. This is one of the things we need to accomplish in order for this file to play back at, at uh, any tempo that we want in Reason. I'll start by zooming in further. Go to the beginning here, and I'm using the arrow tool, which doubles as an audition tool, and I'm simply clicking in between the slices to make sure that I only have one pulse. So far, so good. You'll notice that as I audition the last slice, the program probably is going to scroll forward, and it's very easy to lose your place until you notice that the file that you're auditioning is uh, the cursor's uh, outline with a dotted line. That'll help you keep your place in the file. Scrolled again. Here's our dotted line. And I'm simply clicking with the mouse. Scroll forward here. The program act actually did a pretty good job with this loop. Now here's our last slice. We do want to add a slice at the very end of this file. This is where I would use my pencil tool. I'm using Apple 4 to grab the tool, and I'm simply clicking with the mouse to add the last slice. At this point, I'm going to move the right locator at the end. Remember that the quick command for that was Apple click, and I'll zoom out. And there is the file that's been sliced. Next, we move on to the saving process. Before we save, we need to know how much time we have between the locators, and we also need to make sure that the locators are set to a proper loop point. So I'm going to play this loop. I'm going to count the number of bars, and I'm going to make sure that the right locator is set at the proper place. So here we go. One, two, three, four, so the right locator is set at a proper loop point. I know that I have four bars here. So before I save, I will tell the program how many bars I have here in this window. And now I'm ready to save this file. I'll put it on the desktop here.
Now, it has taken this audio file, which is either AIFF or a WAV file, and has converted it into a recycle file that I can use in Dr. Rex Loop Player.